You know, this week's snack episodes are not as much about content as they are the planning and the review that we're doing uh, for 2020 right 2022 right now with Inside of Herd. And so I'm recording these episodes mainly for our internal team, but thought I would publish them here as well. Let's get into it. All right, so core values are the values or the attributes that we believe are core to who we are as a company and the types of people who we want to make up our team. And so to find our values, uh, Derek and I went through the ideal teammates that we need to scale the company around and then tried to identify what makes them special if we were to clone those people and, and to find those attributes. Um, so those are the values that we came up with. And so we have seven values I'm gonna share with you and I'll just give a little bit of color for each uh, as to the, the core values that we have for Herd Media, uh, you know, for the next 10 years and, and obviously um, for, for 2022. So first of all, a champion mindset. And, and the idea here is the insatiable desire to be the best. There are, um, there are times, especially in our industry, when, you know, the, the, the idea of done is better than perfect is something that I believe in uh, wholeheartedly. But as a service provider, I think that being done and being done excellently and being done to the highest quality possible is something that can get lost in our industry. It's so much about momentum. It's so much about volume and speed. And I agree about all of those things, but there is still something to be said about being the absolute best at your craft, being the absolute best at your industry. Um, we talked about this last week and, you know, obviously it's a little bit of a meme, but uh, w when we talk about Kobe, you know, when you think about Michael Jordan, when you think about the best craftsmen, the best executors, when it comes to business, they have this insatiable desire, this champion mindset. So that's, that's our first core value. The second core value belief in the team. This is the idea that no individual, no, uh, no team member, no customer, um, no stakeholder, whatever is bigger than the team. And it's a belief that, uh, the, the, our team collectively can accomplish anything. And, uh, this is one that, you know, I think especially as we continue to add to the team, especially as we continue to attract the types of talent that that we uh, have in mind and uh, and the individuals, frankly, that we have in mind to add to the team, this is just going to get more and more self-fulfilling. You know, it's like Bo Schembechler, Schembechler's uh, speech when he talks about, you know, we're not going to, we're going to win as a team. We're going to lose as a team, the team, the team, the team. That's, that's the mindset that we need to have. And that's the second core value that we have. The third is a bias towards action, right? So a lot of times it's very easy to talk. It's very easy to hypothesize and to conceptualize. Um, but the practice of not just having an idea, not just asking why should we execute this idea, but actually willing yourself to take meaningful action on that idea and see that action move forward, that is an incredibly important concept and incredibly important value for our team members to have. The fourth, lead from the front. So servant leadership is something we believe in wholeheartedly and it's demonstrated by going first, you know, doing the thing. This means um, you as the leader or whoever is, is uh, you know, putting themselves in these shoes, you do the tough things first to show that it can be done. Because showing is always greater than telling, and you know when you're in when you're in a uh, position of execution, it, a lot of times you're being told what to do all the time. It's so much better if you see your leader out there with you on the front lines, you know, in the in the weeds, executing, and being able to then point to that and say, okay, then, you know, that's the expectation. I need to do that as well. As a leader, you should never ask your team to do something that you wouldn't. That's the idea of leading from the front. Uh, and that's something that I think we've done well. I think we can, um, Derek especially has done very well in taking action and, and just being, being on the front lines of things. And it's something that we can really build on as a part of our culture. The fifth is the longest view in the room. And so this idea is, I stole this from uh, Sam Hinkey, shout out the process. Um, uh, uh, and so the whole idea here is 
when you are in a room of people, when you're in a room of competitors, when you're in a room of clients, uh, of your own teammates, whoever has the longest view, whoever's uh, time frame is the longest, has number one, the most patience, number two, the, the greatest margin for minute errors because you have the longest time frame to make up for it or exceed it or whatever. Um, and it's also going to allow the, that person to make the longest term decisions in terms of investments. So you might take on um, a project at less than your highest rate because you know you're not in it for a year. You're not in it for a month. You're in it for five years or 10 years. Uh, and you're going to be able to make that use that work as a leverage point to get more work, right? That's just one example. Yeah, uh, If you're making an investment, you're okay if you're not going to see the return on that investment in the next two to three months or a year or two years or three years, because you're looking at 10 and 15 and 20 years out down the line. And even that some would say is a limited uh, viewpoint, but in our industry, our industry gets so caught up in what are the tactics that are going to bring me leads tomorrow? What are the tactics that are going to, um, you know, give me a sale in the next month? And while that's sometimes important and necessary, having a longer view is, is something that I think will benefit both us and our clients. Number six is to be engaged relationally. This is something that Carlton and Derek both do very well. Uh, and the idea here is, you know, we as a, we're a small company, we are not necessarily uh, a traditional agency. And a lot of what we are great at is because we understand the people that we work with and their businesses. And we don't understand those businesses because we've spent decades and decades working in it. Like we haven't worked decades and decades as truck drivers or as, um, as chemical manufacturers or as logistics professionals, but we have spent time, heavy amounts of time talking with deeply understanding, spending time with the people who do those jobs. And so being engaged relationally is uh, understanding who the people we work with, who they are, what do, you know, what are they struggling with? What is the, what are the good parts of their lives? What are the bad parts of life? And, you know, part of this is just like, this is what makes business fun. Being, being engaged relationally, understanding who the people are, building teams, both internally and externally. Uh, and that's something that we believe is really important and core to what we do. And then the final one, the seventh one is to be polymathic or multi-capable. We're a small team. We'll always be smaller, you know, even as we continue to grow, um, we're never going to be a, uh, a enormous agency that, you know, can afford to just hire specialists in every area. And so all of our people, all of our teammates need to be multi-capable, need to have understanding on, on, uh, in a pretty deep sense, they need to be able to understand um, multiple different areas of the business, multiple different areas of practice, uh, and they need to be able to not just in theory, but also take action in each of those areas. And that's something that uh, we have been really blessed to find people who fit that description. And it's something that's going to be important for us as we continue in the future. I'm really excited for this week of strategic thinking, and I believe our team will be better going into 2022 as a result. And so for the purposes of the show, tomorrow we'll discuss our company's core focus area and passion. And uh, I will see you all then. See you all then.